Good morning. Welcome to worship today. We are glad that you are all with us, uh, enjoying this brisk, uh, beautiful fall day. Thanks for being here. Uh, and a special thank you to those that are joining us on Facebook or YouTube. Uh, we are slightly delayed today. We, uh, we've had some internet issues, so they will be seeing us in just a little while. I have a couple of announcements for you today. Uh, the first is that as you read in the bulletin and as you've seen in the newsletter and, and in mailings, we have the Painesville Lutheran Academy is starting very soon. And so we're inviting, registration is already open. So we invite you to take a look at that online through, the, through our website. Uh, it's going to be a really exciting opportunity to share ministry together uh, in the ways that we can right now. And so we're very excited about that. Uh, we're excited about it for a number of reasons, but uh, we're, we're mainly excited about it because it's been kind of a dream that we've been working on for a while and we needed a little push. And so uh, this time has given us a big push. And uh, Pastor Adam is, uh, has done a tremendous amount of work along with the whole staff to make that happen. And so we, uh, we give thanks for him and for the rest of the team and for that opportunity to share in together. It's for everybody. Doesn't matter uh, your age, we, uh, we have something in there for everybody. So please take a look. Also, we will be handing out Bibles at the end of the service and talking more about that in just a little while. So if you're here for, uh, for Bibles in those age groups, we, uh, we want you to know we're ready for you today. Uh, we, are also, we also are having communion today, and I'll explain more about that in a little while. But if you did not receive your communion cups already, uh, please let an usher know because we'll want to make sure that you get those also. A uh, couple other notes about visitors with us. Uh, I didn't tell them we were going to do this, but Gavin is here. He's sitting right over here in the nice wicker chair. Uh, we're excited about him joining us. Uh, if you don't remember, Gavin was with us last year and did a tremendous job working with our youth. Uh, he is uh, now in seminary joining us today, so we're excited about Gavin being with us, so that's awesome. And we also have a, a unique visitor that won't see this live, but uh, Barbara Grosvenor. And I'm probably totally butchering her, butchering her last name. But she joins us each week from the UK. As we worship here in this place, she joins us uh, from England. And so we are excited about her doing that. And uh, it's been neat to connect with her. She's been making comments on our Facebook page. So we we'll just do a big shout out to, uh, to England. Can we do that? Can you all yell, I don't know, what, yay England maybe? Or? God save the Queen. All right. Uh, there you go. All right. She gets the award for joining us from the farthest distance today. Also, we could use your help. We, uh, we are in need of ushers. We have great ushers that help us on Sundays, uh, but we could use more. So if you're interested or, or could help us uh, setting this up, doing this work that we do to make this possible, uh, please reach out and send a note to the office. Uh, Tammy will take your name and information, and we'd love to have your help to, uh, to do that. All right. With that, let us begin in prayer. Almighty and eternal God, you show perpetual loving kindness to us, your servants. Because we cannot rely on our own abilities, grant us your merciful judgment and train us to embody the generosity of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Now let us share in our time of confession and forgiveness. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, who creates, redeems, and sustains us and all of creation. Amen. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and of one another. Faithful God, have mercy on us. We confess that we are captive to sin and cannot free ourselves. We tur turn from your loving embrace and go our own ways. We pass judgment on one another before examining ourselves. We place our own needs before those of our neighbors. We keep your gift of salvation to ourselves. Make us humble, cast away our transgressions, and turn us again to life in you. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. God hears the cries of all who call out in need. And through his death and resurrection, Christ has made us his own. 
hear the truth that God proclaims. Your sins are forgiven. In the name of Jesus Christ, led by the Holy Spirit, live in freedom and newness to do God's work in the world. Amen. And now comes the time that we, uh, we don't look forward to as often as you look forward to, I think, and it's the bucket. But I have to confess, today it's not a surprise. Today I know what's in our bucket. So as we prepare for giving out Bibles, we wanted to uh, share some thoughts about them with you. I have a couple of Bibles in here uh, that are mine. I have a few. You probably have a few. Uh, I hope for sure you have one, and if you don't, you let us know, and we'll make sure that you get a Bible. But I have a couple in here, and they're significant for me. This first one was given to me by our synod, and all of the synod staff, and all of the pastors, and all who helped in my ordination service right here in this congregation. It's the Bible that I take with me when I visit people in the hospital. It, uh, it reminds me that we are all in this work of ministry together. And uh, sharing in scripture out of this Bible helps me to connect with, uh, with all those people that uh, have inspired me in the faith. And, uh, and I hope those words and the words of scripture inspire others as we gather in those uh, difficult times that we have. And then I have this Bible. And I think many of you probably have this one. It's the Lutheran Study Bible. Uh, this was given to me from my work at the Bible camp. And it was my Bible that I used all through seminary. And I have, uh, I have lots of notes in here from classes that I took. I have uh, different parts of scriptures that, uh, that I've used for sermons that have been particularly meaningful for me. But what I like most about this Bible is how it connects me to my, uh, all the other vocations of my life. So inside this Bible, I have little notes from my children throughout the years. Those became my bookmarks. And then I have, uh, I have a couple of tickets to go first basketball games that I went with with one of my daughters. And that marks those pages for me in significant moments in here. And then uh, we all went as a family to a Twins game. And so I have that in here marking pages. It's not that those moments are more important than the scripture that it represents. But it reminds me of how we are connected with our families and the people that we love. And so today, at the end of the service, we're going to invite all of you that have received postcards and are uh, receiving Bibles at different uh, ages. We have different Bibles for different folks. We're going to invite you to exit through this side, through this, and then Tammy will hand them out there to you to make sure that you get them, okay? Uh, and as you receive those Bibles, uh, parents, grandparents, we invite you to take them and we invite you to hand them to your youth, right? Reminding us of that baptismal promise that we made to help our, our youth, our kids, our family to grow in their faith by putting scripture in their hands, by putting the word of God right in, uh, in their hands to use. Now, we have a philosophy of Bibles here. We don't want to mistreat them, but we do want to use them. I love seeing worn Bibles because that means you're opening them. I, I love seeing that people are making notes of significant events or, or how those scriptures are, are meaningful to you. God gave us the word not to put it up on a pedestal and not use it. Instead, God gave us uh, scripture so that we try to embrace it and put it into the workings of our lives. And so we invite you to do that as you receive these Bibles uh, today. And so for all those that are receiving Bibles today, let us pray this prayer. Please pray with me. Receive these Bibles. Hear God's word with us. Learn and tell its stories. Discover its mysteries. Honor its commandments. Rejoice in its good news. And may God's life-giving word inspire us all make us wise. Amen. Next week, I will promise to stump Pastor Adam. He won't know what's in the bucket. Uh, but uh, help me to uh, give a big round of applause for all our youth that are receiving Bibles today.
turn again this morning to the Gospel of Matthew. This week, the 20th chapter, beginning with verse 1. Jesus said to the disciples, The kingdom of heaven is like a landowner who went out early in the morning to hire laborers for his vineyard. After agreeing with the laborers for the usual daily wage, he sent them into his vineyard. When he went out about nine o'clock, he saw others standing idle in the marketplace. And he said to them, you also go into the vineyard and I will pay you whatever is right. So they went. When he went out again about noon and about three o'clock, he did the same. And at about five o'clock, he went and found others standing around and he said to them, why are you standing here idle all day? They said to him, because no one has hired us. He said to them, you also go into the vineyard. When evening came, the owner of the vineyard said to his manager, Call the laborers and give them their pay, beginning with the last and then going to the first. When those hired about five o'clock came, each of them received the usual daily wage. Now when the first came, they thought they would receive more, but each of them also received the usual daily wage. And when they received it, they grumbled against the landowner, saying, these last worked only one hour, and you have made them equal to us who have borne the burden of the day and the scorching heat. But he replied to one of them, Friend, I am doing you no wrong. Did you not agree with me for the usual daily wage? Take what belongs to you and go. I choose to give to this last the same as I give to you. Am I not allowed to do what I choose with what belongs to me? Or are you envious because I am generous? So the first will be or so the last will be first, and the first will be last. The gospel of our Lord. Grace and peace to you from God our Father and our Lord and Savior Jesus, the risen Christ. Amen. Our tendency is to complicate things. Everything is so complicated, or at least it feels that way. And so much of the complication that we experience in our lives is created by us, by ourselves, or by the human earthly forces that are around us. We complicate our lives with all sorts of blueprints and systems for how to get something or somewhere. If you do this, you'll get this. If you do this, you'll, you will end up here. So we spend the majority of our lives at the mercy of these outward forces telling us what is or isn't best for us to receive what it is we do or do not deserve. We're always calculating, always measuring, always stacking ourselves up against others and others against ourselves. And because we view everything, just about everything, through this lens of complication, it's easy to complicate the message of the gospel by putting it in terms that we understand. Do this, and you get this. Go to church, read your Bible, help someone in need, don't do that thing, but make sure you do this thing, and in the end, you'll get love and grace. We say that that's not what we believe, but how many of us are motivated by this guilt-inducing reasoning? It's simple, and yet it complicates everything. Because what happens if you miss a Sunday of church? What happens if we're actually not actually in church? How much is enough and how much isn't enough? If you do all the things that you're supposed to as a Christian person, do you get all the love and grace or just some? What kind of scale are we on compared to others? Because that's how every single other part of our life works whether we've tried to simplify it or resist the human urge to partake in it. Go to, go to this kind of school and you'll get this kind of job. 
Start now or you won't have enough for retirement. If you're not climbing the ladder, what are you doing? If you don't have this thing or follow this parenting style or strive for this idea, ideal, well, you don't deserve as much as the person who does do all of those things. Me. You don't deserve as much as me. And we think it's all so simple. Do this thing or do that thing and you get this thing or that thing. We think we have it figured out. And all that we're doing is complicating our lives and everything around us. But the kingdom of heaven, the kingdom of heaven is like a landowner who hires workers for his vineyard at different points throughout the day. He says to each of them that he'll pay them what is right. Not a specific amount, but what is right. Some labor all day in the scorching heat, and some labor just a small portion of it. And they all get to the end of the day, and each of them is paid the same amount, no matter when they began their work for the day. They're all paid a day's wage, enough for that single day, their daily bread, if you will. And the last have been made equal to the first. And each has received enough. No more or no less. So if that's the kingdom of heaven, if that's what the kingdom of heaven is like, the kingdom of heaven doesn't work like anything that we know. There's no fairness based on what you've put in. There's no cause and effect. The kingdom of heaven doesn't sound right based on what we know. When I was younger, I used to hate when we'd be playing some sort of competitive game. And at the end, instead of one team winning, somehow uh, both teams would end up tied and we'd somehow someone would proclaim, everyone's a winner. I was keeping score in my head the whole time. We definitely were not tied. Why do we all win if my team actually won? Why do we all get paid the same if some of us have been working longer and harder than the rest? Jesus' parable shows us what the kingdom of heaven is like and it doesn't seem right and it doesn't seem fair at all. We do our best on a daily basis to live Christian lives oriented on Christ's example. And maybe we do do more than others. Maybe we do give more money, donate more food, volunteer more of our time, read our Bible more. And that's great. Good for you. Keep doing it. But we are complicating something that is meant to be simple. We are keeping score for a game that doesn't exist. In this parable, Jesus is trying to awaken us anew to the understanding of what it means to be Christian. Grace. The promise of the resurrection the gift of eternal life, the thief on the cross next to Jesus saying, remember me when you come into your kingdom, and Jesus replying, today you will be with me in paradise. The scandal of this parable, if there is one, is not that the kingdom of heaven is enough for everyone, even those that show up late or who don't do as much work, or who are seen as less than we are. The scandal is that we would be so blinded, so offended by this ridiculous equality that we, would not, that we do not see that the full gift of grace has also been given to us. That we too have received enough. 
This parable should open our eyes to the beauty of God's promise to us through Jesus Christ. The gift of eternal life, not earned by how much of our lives we spend working in the vineyard, but through the ultimate sacrifice on the cross and the resurrection of Jesus. We're about to take communion together this morning. And as we do, as we receive the bread and wine, the body and blood of Jesus, I want you to be reminded of this great gift of grace that frees each and every one of us from the complicated burden, the burden of our complicated lives and leaves the salvation up to God who chooses a more simple way than we could ever imagine. Enough for everyone. You and I will never escape human nature and the desire to complicate our lives with the ways of this world. But every time that we gather with one another, every time that we gather together, we pray God's will may be done on earth as it is in heaven. And for, so for a people who are promised our daily bread, no matter when we come to the table or how hard we've worked to get there, in the same way, may it be so here on earth. May we take the gift of grace that we have each been promised and we each have received and let it be what compels us to work not for what is fair or what is earned, but for what is right and for what is just. May we look more often on another and be grateful that they have enough instead of looking first to ourselves and wondering why we haven't received more. In a time so defined by ensuring our individual rights are maintained at the expense of another's, may the righteousness and rest of God prevail for all who labor and are heavy laden. The last will be first, and the first will be last, Jesus says. And if we're to complicate that with how the world works, it sounds completely unfair. But the first and the last, they receive the same. Grace that is enough. No more and no less. It isn't fair, but it is right, and it is just. This is how God works. This is how the kingdom of heaven works. And may God's will be done on earth just as it is in heaven. Let us pray. Holy and gracious God, you have revealed to us through Jesus Christ the unfairness of, the, of grace. And we are so grateful that you continue to promise to each and every one of us, all who labor, enough grace for the day ahead. Help us in this life to do what you will in heaven, here on earth, and to work our entire lives toward that goal of enoughness for everyone. May we be examples of that in every day of our lives. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. We'll now hear, it is well with my soul.
Our scars are a sign of grace in our lives. And Father, how you brought us through. Deep were the wounds, and dark was the night. The promise of your love you proved. Now every battle yet to come, let this be our song. Thank you for leading our worship today in music. We uh, we give thanks for all of you talented musicians who share those gifts with us, uh, even on this uh, chilly day. We also give thanks for all of you that gathered in this place in this way, uh, reminding us that it's not where we meet or how we meet, it's that we meet in the gospel. And so thank you for, uh, for being here this day. Let us pray. Drawn together in the compassion of God, We pray for the church, the world, and all of those in need. As you hear the words, Lord, in your mercy, I invite you to respond with, hear our prayer. Generous God, you make the last first and the first last. Where this gospel challenges the church, equip it for its work of service. Strengthen those who suffer for Christ. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. 
hear our prayer. Sun and wind, bushes and worms, cattle and great cities, nothing in creation is outside your concern. Mighty God, in your mercy, tend to it all. Give us a spirit of generosity toward all that you have made. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Where we find envy and create enemies, you provide enough for all. Bring peace to places of conflict and violence. Inspire leaders with creativity and wisdom. Bless the work of negotiators, peacekeepers, and the development workers. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Reveal yourself to all in need, as you are gracious and merciful, slow to anger, abounding in steadfast love, ready to relent from punishing. Accompany judges and lawyers, victims of crime and those serving sent sentences. Give fruitful labor and a livelihood to those seeking work. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Even beyond our expectations, you choose to give generously. Grant life, health, and courage to all who are in need. And give comfort and care to those who are mourning the loss of loved ones. And we especially pray for the family and friends of Sonia Nelson, sister of Viv Johnson. Strengthen them all now. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. All these things and whatever else you see that we need, we entrust to your mercy, through Christ our Lord. Amen. And now at this time I would like to invite Pastor Adam to come forward. He doesn't know that he's coming forward. We, uh, we celebrated last week and said a, a few words about this week of Jubilee. Well, we're still in this week of Jubilee, so if you didn't know it, last week was his birthday. Yeah, let's give him a hand for that. We, we really should give a hand to your mom, too. I think she did more work on your birthday. That's probably true. <laughs> but we also want to give thanks for Pastor Adam tomorrow because he celebrates his fifth anniversary on that date. Fifth anniversary of being with us in ministry. And so we want to share these words with you. And then as we recognize this time... We recognize that Pastor Adam was brought to us to serve in the, word, in the ministry of word and sacrament. That's why he's called here to be among us. And so over the past several weeks, I have led us in communion. I'm going to begin communion by sharing a few uh, words of, of housekeeping. But then I'd ask, would you mind sharing the words of institution today as we celebrate this day with you? Thank you. So let us now recognize Pastor Adam. We give you thanks, almighty and gracious God, that you have fed us with heavenly food, the body and blood of your Son, uniting us through him in the communion of the Holy Spirit. And we thank you for raising up among us faithful servants for the ministry of word and sacrament. Especially, we give thanks today for Pastor Adam Butler. And we pray that he may continue to exemplify the gospel in word and deed. Grant that we, with Pastor Adam, may joyfully serve you in all our days and finally rejoice in your glory through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Now I need your help to give great, a great deal of thanks for Pastor Adam, but also for his family who uh, are in this ministry with him. And so uh, we give thanks for all of you also for the ways that you give up time with Pastor Adam so that he may do the ministry that he's called to do as you support him in his ministry and as you pray for him also. We know that you uh, are ministers in this place also. So can we give Pastor Adam and his whole family a big round of applause today? Yeah, honk those horns. And please keep those, uh, those uh, notes of encouragement uh, coming as we celebrate this week of Jubilee, and they can come well after Monday to uh, help us all to thank Pastor Adam and his family for what they do for all of us. And now, in just a moment, we're going to have him uh, share the words of institution, but before we do that, 
You should have received the cup and the communion elements. Uh, after we say the Lord's Prayer, Pastor Adam will invite you then to take those elements, uh, and you'll hear these words. Then we invite you after you've taken those elements, uh, after we do the dismissal, to uh, to put uh, your uh, remains, the remains of the packaging, into the garbages that we have available for you. And please don't forget, if you're coming to uh, get a Bible today, make sure that you exit on that exit over there so that you receive those today. Pastor Adam? Well, we remember the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. And again, after supper, he took the cup, and when he had given thanks, he gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sins. Do this for the remembrance of me. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Now the body and blood of Christ given and shed for you. Amen. Now as you take those elements, I share these words with you. Mother in God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, bless you and lead you into the way of truth and life. Amen. Now be kind to one another and go in peace to love and to serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. Amen. Thanks for coming, everyone.
like a shit.